So welcome back everyone. I'm very curious to hear how your meditations have been progressing mm -hmm. and we'll have a minute to talk about that a little bit later, but just a reminder of our journey so far. So we started off talking about meditation and what it is not. We spoke about the benefits of meditation, meditation as a practice. Then we covered the stages of meditation as well as the internal and external conditions. Um, as extra, we spoke a little bit about the book and keeping the book. We then went into postures. That was last week, correct posture, how to sit to maximize your meditation and also the four steps, some practical tools that you could use in your everyday life to deal with whatever is coming your way. And so today we are going to move into the five problems and the eight remedies. If you missed any of the previous recordings, you're very welcome to go onto YouTube. They are all recorded and are there for you to listen to or to listen to again if you need to. So the five problems and the five remedies. Great. Together with that, we are going to do a meditation today about the preliminaries. And the reason this is very important is because these are predetermined steps that you take at the start of your meditation. So you might wonder why this is so important because surely you could just sit down to your 10 breaths and off you go. But really, these are very important to prepare your mind and to prepare even your body because you've learned now how to sit, you've learned how to manage your external and your internal conditions, but these steps are really powerful when it comes to taking care of your karma so that your meditation becomes even more powerful. And today, we are going to do it as the primary meditation but in your practice, it will be something that you do prior to your meditation. So practicing it today, just so that you get the feel for it if you haven't done it before. But when you start put joining together the preliminaries, preliminaries and your meditation, that's when you get real benefit. And we will do that after we've covered the five problems and the eight remedies. Now, I'm really curious to hear from any of you anything that you might have realized or learned this week during your meditation. You can either pop it in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and share something that you might have realized or learned this week about your meditation practice. Okay, let's move on then. So, five problems and eight remedies. So today we're gonna to discuss these five problems and eight remedies because these are the things that over two and a half thousand years of people meditating comes up again and again and again and are things that will get in the way of you having your best meditation. So these are problems that people have encountered for many, many centuries and have also figured out ways to get around that. So even though you can set up your room, you can have the correct posture, you can do all the right things at the end of the day, when you sit down to meditate, one or more of these things will pop up at some stage. Oh, so, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure no matter how long you've been doing this, they'll keep on coming around and around, and around again. And so we're going to cover these five and Tinam is going to give us what we could do to remedy each of these. So we're going to take them one at a time. And so it's important to study these to understand what they are and to recognize them when they do pop up their heads because otherwise you'll be sitting there wondering what's going on or think that you can't meditate or a whole bunch of reasons that might take you away from meditation and so they are really there to for you to to know how to fix when you recognize them and then you would know what to do so the five different problems that you will encounter again and again, no matter how long and how practiced you are as a meditator. The first is you just don't feel like it. 
And we all have that some mornings when we get up or some evenings where I just don't want to. Okay. And so that's the, the, the manana, the maybe manana problem. Tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. It's okay. I'm tired today. I need to sleep five minutes more. Or it's been a hectic day. I need to make dinner. Whatever. You'll find some reason not to do it. Or thinking that feeling that you don't want to do it is a good reason not to do it. Because sometimes even if you don't feel like it, you should just do it. Right? The next is forgetting the instruction or losing the object of your concentration. So we'll cover that one as well. The next is recognizing what we call mental dullness, which is just sluggishness. Like your mind lowers, you know, everything feels a little bit slow, like you're walking through very thick mud, right? Your brain is in thick mud. The other is agitation which is your mind is overly active and overly busy and finding the, finding the balance sometimes between these two or recognizing one or the other and knowing what to do is really important. The next is not taking action when action is required. So you have to do something and you don't, or you keep on doing something when you don't need to do it at all. So recognizing also the difference between these two. Now I have to do something or, you know what, just leave it alone. Everything's fine. My, my mother always used to say, um, you don't need to fix something if it's not broken. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. really what that last one is. Okay, so without much further ado, we're going to dive right in and cover the first one, which is I don't feel like doing it. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. And I'm quite curious, Sunam, how one has to deal with this. That's the first problem you have to deal with because if you have not mastered that problem, you will not have the other ones, which are meditation problems. So first you have to get on your cushion. And why this is the, mo uh, the biggest problems of all, we have for the first problems four remedies which is also very interesting that we have four remedies for that one and it goes back to our first class the first remedy is have a goal why you want to learn to meditate as said meditation is not a tool in itself so we talked a lot about all the benefits meditation has, that you can better concentrate, that you might even have the feeling of the future, your guts instincts are developing, or you might be able to connect with angels around you and in the end maybe overcome death. I think in our case, in our lineage, is also one of the main goals of meditation is really to understand emptiness better and develop love for all people so this is the first one so if you have this problem really make yourself a list where you put down which goals you want to achieve through meditating the next step is then really develop the strong feeling that you want to reach that we are all in our worldly lives and we are get, get distracted by our family, by our loved ones, by Amazon, <laughs> by our work. So maybe if this is really your problem that you are not getting on the cushion every day, keep this list of the benefits on the cushion and read them again and again and again and develop a strong desire to reach these goals especially with getting better into understanding emptiness this will solve all the problems of your life so these 10 or 15 minutes which you invest into meditating every morning will change all the 23 hours and 45 minutes of the rest of your day so I think it's really worth the invest and find that's more or less my logic, how I put these two together. So find your goal and find your desire that you want to master meditation. And then this should motivate you to get on the cushion every morning. 
And when we have a goal and when we have this th strong desire, we will simply do what is necessary to reach it, which means we are sitting on the cushion every morning. And when we do this, sitting every day on the cushion, doing what's necessary to master the meditation and with this reaching the goal of the meditation, then it becomes very, very easy and it is like, brushing your teeth every morning. I think that was the metaphor which Han Lee used. It's like you develop this habit and if you don't do it, you miss something and you do it totally automatically. So this is called ease through practice. You don't need to think about it. And that's also one of my recommendation, really just get up and sit on it. That's why most of the programs which help you to develop a habit, are 12 week programs because if you do it every day for 12 weeks then it's really a habit you don't think about it and you don't fight in your mind oh i want to sleep five more minutes you just do it without questioning and because it has become part of your life and part of your daily morning or evening practice yeah but it might also be that even if it is a habit, sometimes life happens and then you lose the habit. And so <laughs> it's important to come back to it again, right? And to yeah. remember why and to start again. So don't worry if you have to start again. I think that uh, is the second part of this problem. Thank you. And uh, I think a good solution for that is really keep track of it with the meditation journal so you easily notice, oh, I have skipped two or three days, and then you notice it immediately and can go back to the habit, which is much easier than suddenly, I know, I know that suddenly three weeks are gone and you have not meditated for three weeks, and then you need to develop this ease through practice again. But if you only skip one or two days, it's fine. So also be... Um, be kind with yourself. Uh, I have a successful meditation week if I sit on the cushion on five of seven days. That's my personal rule. And so really be also not too strict with yourself in the sense if you skip one day, feel guilty or whatever, because this guilt is only in the way to get on the cushion the next day. Excellent. Yeah. Great. So the next one, moving on, and this is losing the object. Now, if you don't have an object to start with, you can't lose it. So it is also important for you to have an object or to pick an object before you meditate. In the old scriptures, it said that your teacher is your object or will give you an object. But if you have one during your meditation, you might just, lose it like you sometimes put your key somewhere or where they fall out of your pocket and you have no idea where they are they and you don't even out. notice that you have lost. exactly and then it's just <laughs> gone and you're like what did i do with it and you're running through the house trying to find it very similar kind of thing that you might sit down and have this kind of problem yeah so how do we solve that so you already mentioned that um there are two different variations in the scriptures for this problem so the first variation you mentioned is that you have to have an object because otherwise you cannot lose it and it is said that the object the meditation you need to do you get normally from your teacher and the second variation of this problem is that you simply lose your object during your meditation and i think everybody of us know this problem your mind is going off to something totally different and then why i choose the picture of this beautiful dog with the <laughs> toy in her mouth just talk to your mind and bring your mind back in the class where we talked about the meditation stages, so it's normal that in the beginning, your mind is only for maybe 30 seconds or even only for one minute on the object and then it will wander off. So talk to your mind and ask your mind to bring the object back. So the 
remedy against losing the object is bring your mind back. And in the scriptures, it's called remembering, which also covers two variations. So remember the object before you sit on your cushion. Always decide before you start to meditate what you are meditating about today. And the second variation of remembering is just remember during your meditation that you wanted to meditate on this beautiful gratitude or watching your thoughts or doing Tonglen and bring your mind back and focus on your meditation object. In case someone is wondering, do you have some examples of an object? The meditation object, and we talk about that in the last class, can be three different ones. We have three different kinds of meditation, like we did with the um, watch your thoughts. In that moment, the thoughts are the meditation object. In Tonglen, the whole process is your meditation object. And as we do today, we are also going through a process. So each step of the process is your meditation object. Got it. Okay. Moving on to the next uh, third problem, I think it is. And this is this busy or sleepy mind, or what we would call an agitated or a dull mind. Mm -hmm. So agitation or a busy mind is really just your mind is wandering all the time, okay? And it keeps on moving around very much like this picture shows that there's, a, there's a some kind of station where people are moving around all the time, going up and down the elevator, going here, going there, going all over the place. Right? So that's really agitation. Dullness is a little bit more subtle. Sometimes you have an obvious kind of dullness where you are fixated on this object, okay, but you've lost the clarity of the object. So in the subtle dullness, you more you are more fixated and have clarity, but you've lost intensity somehow. And so the kind of meditation that you might do is making you forget forgetful and you sort of lose where your mind is and it just becomes very um, unsharp, if you like. So those are the two kind of problems that you also might um, experience when you are sitting on your cushion. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas to solve yeah. that or to describe that further? I would like to maybe go a little bit deeper in these three uh, qualities which mm -hmm. uh, define if you have uh, focused meditation, that's fixation, which is simply your mind is on the object. That what's normally understood uh, as your focus. But the scriptures are adding two more qualities. And the first, the second one is clarity. And I think most people misinterpret this, that they have a clear visualization. Like if you are in Tonglen imagining the person sitting next to you, they measure if they have clarity, if they can see the person clearly and with all details. But since not all people are good visualizer, that's the word I never learned, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not ref, uh, referring to your visual picture, it's referring that your mind is clear. In the sense, you're really on the object. It can also be that you, have, you can have these feelings as bodily feelings or... Um, as colors, there are so many different sense types out there. So it's about being clear. It's not that there is something standing between you and the object. Mm -hmm. And the intensity refers to this, that you are standing there like open mouthed and you are totally into it. You are curious. You, you like to think about this meditation object. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and nothing can get you off the object because you are so wanting to meditate on it. Yeah. It's almost like being in awe when you explain that it's like, it's like being in awe of something you can't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. break away from it. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So what is the remedy for these two problems? The remedy is called the watcher. I, uh, we already tried in the last classes to that you establish this watcher. And that's the reason why we did that already in the beginning that you get used to it, because this is the remedy for this problem. And the watcher notices that you are on the sleepy side or on the nervous busy agitated side so this is this really this part of your brain you split off five or ten percent which is checking on a regular basis are you on the object are you sleepy are you agitated do you have has your meditation all of the three qualities we want to have and I put here this beautiful smoke detector, which really, it is like a smoke detector and you need to develop this, that maybe in the beginning when you learn to meditate, you, you automatically every 30 seconds or every minute, this thing goes on and checks, am I on the object? Do I have intensity? Do I have clarity? Do I have focus and check all three of these? Because it's so important and that's why it is the remedy. If you don't notice it, you can then not do anything against it, which is the next problem. Mm -hmm. Both here, the remedy is really only develop the watcher. Watch if your meditation has all three qualities you want to have. And this is as well a beautiful skill you develop, which you can use off the cushion, which you can use the 23 hours and 45 minutes when you are not sitting on your cushion. If you do it when you have to, you have to deliver something in time, you're sitting down and you want to work for one hour, very concentrate on something, and you have the watcher established, it will help you to work focused for one hour. So this is really um, one of the main skills you have to develop as meditator, develop the watcher. How do you do it? You split off in the beginning of the meditation before you start with your 10 breath, this small part of your mind, which is simply watching. It's called in Tibetan Shishin, which is a beautiful word. Most people remember it. And it's simply the word says, watcher. Notice if you have a problem. I can imagine it's also really helpful when you're doing things like the book or the four steps, because you might start noticing things about what you're doing, or it sort of creates a bit of a pause in your day where you mm -hmm. observe yourself and your behavior maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next problem is your watcher, the, the, the smoke detector is going off and you standing there with your video camera filming the fire and not calling the fire department when you know something is going very, very wrong and you make no effort to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. That would be the next, the next one that you would have to... Um, be aware of while you're in meditation, I guess, right? Yeah. I think especially if you are tending to the sleepy side, you have this problem. Oh, yes, your watcher is there and you notice that everything is going a little bit slow and you're not clear and bright on your object. Yeah, I notice it, but I don't do anything against it because it's already in built in the sleepy mind that they don't want to invest the effort to really do something against it. So 
what we are doing is doing something. We are calling the fire department, which means in our meditation, we are applying antidotes to the problem we have, which we will talk in a second. Mm -hmm. So this picture is a little bit dramatic to show you that it's really <laughs> important that when you watch, <laughs> you have a problem, that you need to do something against it. During meditation, we are talking with our mind much more gentler. That's why I choose this beautiful, nice guy. He has strong muscles, but he is very gentle, as you can see. So we are calling this guy to help us and fix the problem. So the watcher is called Sheshin, the smoke detector. And this guy is called Ducepa, which is... You can call it the muscle guy or the doer, like Nike's <laughs> the slogan, just do it. He's the guy who really doing it. And you know, a lot of couples which have this combination, one is noticing and the other is doing it. And so were these two together, the watcher, which we got in problem three, which noticing the problem and now in for we are calling the guy who is really applying the antidotes against the problem we have in the moment, either busyness or sleepiness. So let's start with the remedies for busyness. I want to go over them today in a very, very short style, like listing them. And then I would like to ask you during the week, apply them. And our next class is called Remedies in Depth, where we go exactly over these remedies against busyness and the remedies against uh, sleepiness in much more detail. So the remedies for busyness, your mind is wandering around, maybe even somewhere else, or even if you are on your object, your mind is going like crazy in an incredible speed. That's a sign of busyness. It's talking all the time in an incredible speed. So what do you do? The first ones are related to your body. We talked about that a little bit in our last class about the posture. posture. So first check where your chin is. Normally, if you have busy mind, your chin is going up. So take it down a little bit and you will notice how which a great influence your body posture has on your mind. Mm -hmm. And then the next one might be your hand position. If you have an open hand position, this, if you tend to be a very busy person, maybe you want to try to put your hands down on your thighs because this really makes you contact with the earth, which has a much different grounded energy the third one is really go with long exhales if you notice it focus for a few breaths on your exhale and make the exhale especially long normally when we are agitated or nervous we have this like a dog <laughs> exhale and so really focus on it that your exhale is long and has the same quantity of air over the whole, whole exhale. Like, it's not like, and then there is nothing coming, more or less, you're not breathing anymore. It's really try to get your air out in a very, very same level over the whole exhale. So like a steady exhale, right? With steady, the that's the word. Yes, thank you. That is the word I was looking hmm. for. Steady, thank you. Yeah. And then the third one is think of a late person. Maybe a beloved person. Think about this person for about 20, 30 seconds and it will you bring down and then come back to your meditation. So I also shot an um, arrow on the uh, slide. 
So you start with the small remedies like chin down and hand position. And then you go back to your meditation. You notice that you're still very agitated. Then take a break again. Focus on a few exhales, very long exhales. Then go back. Oh, you notice that you're still agitated. Then break it again and think of a lady person. So it's like the remedy is getting stronger and stronger. So when you say um, the person, what kind of, what kind of person is that? Is it just somebody that you know or someone has a particular quality about them that's very relaxed or someone that you care about? I would say something, somebody you really love. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And I know also with the breathing that in the military, when people are in the very high stress situations and their minds are very agitated, they also teach what they call box breathing. So... Steady in breath, steady out breath, all the same to try and calm the mind down. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So next one. The remedies for sleepiness. I have ordered all in three different groups. So the first one, it goes the same um, pattern. Start with the easy ones and go down and getting more heavy and heavy. So when you're sleepy, normally your chin wanders down, so get it up a little bit. Maybe turn your hands so that the palms are facing up. If the sleepiness, um, you can also crack your eyes a little bit open so that the light goes in, which helps against sleepiness. Deep inhales because maybe you have not enough oxygen. And then if we go to from the body to our thinking, you can remember how lucky you are. We have shoes and we have a roof over our head. We have the ability to sit on our cushion and meditate. So just think about all the things you are grateful in your life because this will really lift your mind and your mood. Also a very good remedy is imagining, depending on what you're meditating on, like for example, when you do Tonglen, you are very often visualizing the person sitting uh, next to you so imagine the person like it's sitting in a halo of light so just brighten up your visualization with some kind of background light and if these are not enough break your meditation get off the cushion put cold water in your face or just get up and move do a little bit of yoga or jump around and dance for a few minutes to get your circulation going and then sit down again. And if you are able to do that, then it's really experience which one is working best for you. Not all of these mentioned are working best for you, though that's also experiment. Which one is working good for you, where you only have to apply it for a few seconds and then fix, problem fixed, and you can go on with your meditation. Mm. And that's the experience. You will overdo it in the beginning. <laughs> so if you apply a remedy against sleepiness, maybe you land on the other side on busyness because you have overdone it. So that's the experience you need to develop applying this antidotes, which one is working best for you and also in which quality or for how long you apply it that you not overdo it and are landing on the other side. Mm. But if you learn it, then it's beautiful because you have <laughs> another problem. <laughs> You do, and this is that you are maybe a little bit obsessive compulsive, we say sometimes. You're just going at something, trying to fix something, and it's not broken. So sometimes we're trying to, to do things or to over-practice or be overly focused 
And I remember um, when I did my silent retreat here early in the year, um, Sunan was the one that reminded um, us, relax, just have fun. You know, it doesn't have to be so very serious all the time and wanting to, you know, do it as perfectly as you possibly can. So don't take action when it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think also that depending on your personality type, you might have problem four or problem five. If you are more the overfulfiller, then you might have problem five. <laughs> you are constantly checking and constantly applying and you're not getting on your meditation because you're constantly taking care of problems which might not even exist. And if you are maybe a more relaxed person, it's hard for you. Yes, you notice the problem, but maybe then it's hard for you to even apply the antidote. So I think depending on your personality type, you might already know which one is your preferred problem of the last two. <laughs> so I think that summarizes the five problems and the, the eight remedies for those five problems. Um, so oh, I have, another, I have another slide. Leave it alone is the remedy. <laughs> Just let it run. If the meditation goes, let it run. <laughs> Hands off. <laughs> All right. So the five problems are may, just maybe tomorrow, just don't feel like it. Losing the object or not having one. Mental dullness or being overly agitated not taking action when the fire detector is picking something up and there's a fire happening in your mind or overdoing it over taking, taking action when it's not required. Mm-hmm. So I'm quite curious if any of you have any questions about these or want to share maybe the one that you struggle with the most and you can pop it in the chat or just unmute and tell us which one that you struggle with the most. Hi, here is Rita. Hi. Um, I struggle a lot with uh, busyness. <laughs> mm. My mind is uh, super busy all the time. And then uh, I go to this uh, being too strict with myself. And then I go into the guilt <laughs> because I don't do what I want to do or my mind doesn't do what I want it to do. And then I get, uh, how to say, discouraged and frustrated. Mm-hmm. This is one thing because I try to meditate at night because waking up early for me is quite difficult. And then when I try to wake up early, then my problem is laziness because I just want to sleep those five minutes more. Mm-hmm. And then it makes a big difference. And then I am late and I have to rush to get my daughter ready and tra la la. So, yeah. Well, I will try to apply the remedy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, maybe one tip, because you already mentioned somehow that you know before you sit down to your meditation what your problem is. Like if you do it in the morning, I know that I, sleepiness is my problem. Or if I'm sitting down in the evening, then maybe the busyness is my problem. You can, if you have this feeling already before your meditation, you can even remedy it before you sit down. Like in the morning, I really highly recommend to do five or ten minutes of some kind of yoga or what is your preferred um, exercise to get your circulation running. So this prevents already before you sit down having the problem. And in the evening, if it is busyness, then just make yourself a nice cup of tea, sit down for five minutes and just enjoy that feeling. Oh, and and try to get the feeling of relaxedness. Like I, for example, if I have this feeling, I'm really sitting already in front of my altar with my cup of tea, And I uh, just have a nice chat with my teacher where I have a picture on my altar and chat with him like sitting with a good friend in the coffee shop and having all the time I want to have. So maybe you want to try to remedy it already before you go on the cushion. Hmm. 
great okay idea. and and what is the remedy to because in the morning my problem is that i don't wake up i mean i i i snooze the alarm <laughs> because i want to sleep more it's not that i stand up and i try to meditate and then my mind is busy or lazy sorry it's it, is that sitting on the cushion mm -hmm. uh, i think i have to work on the goals i mean what do you say i don't know if it was uh sunam yeah make the list why 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 am wow. i meditating like Correct. why why yeah what is my goal maybe this is something i should work on mm -hmm. okay thank you very much sure yeah and regarding those snooze i put an old-fashioned alarm clock somewhere in the room that i have to get out of bed to stop it mm -hmm. And then yeah, I, I heard that three goes to the friends that I sleep with my husband, and <laughs> he gets super annoyed. And then maybe put your list of your meditation goals next to the alarm clock, and that's how I would do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, then we have uh, another one in the chat. Um, I can fall asleep at a moment's notice. Yes, 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 I know that. Do something which brings your blood circulation really up before you sit down. Dance around for three minutes, one of these really nice songs which keep you going. And during meditation, maybe you want to really try the that you have the eyes a little bit open because really if it's not dark the light makes an incredible difference because that's how we are you close your eyes it's dark and then our mind thinks oh let's sleep or experiment with seeing your meditation object like there is a background light And then there is another one with the alarm clock. Uh, turn it off and go back to sleep. That's why I recommend put your meditation goals next to your alarm clock. Yeah. And also a very good trick is if it put it 20 seconds away from you. It's called the 20 second rule. If it takes you 20 seconds to get to it, so put it high up on something where you have to get a chair, pull the chair, get up, take it off, you're much less likely to fall back asleep again. I have to think how can I do that in a one room apartment? Hmm. You can lock it you can lock it somewhere. I don't know if you can still hear it through the cupboard or how loud it is, and then take the key, put it in the bathroom ah. or somewhere far away. So you're gonna have to go get the key, unlock it, put it off. Okay. And just make it as, to try and stretch it up to twenty seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Great. Great. Thank you for, for for those questions and sharing. That's wonderful. So now we're going to move into our meditation for the day. And as I said in the beginning, we are going to go through doing the preliminaries and we are going to do it as a meditation today. But when you get your homework, you are going to, you can combine it. You can probably do it on your own if you wanted to, but ideally you should combine it with the other meditations that we've already done. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to ask uh, Sunam to take us through that today and then we're going to wrap up we do the meditation preliminaries which are described in the scriptures they are um, a combination of the six preliminaries and the seven ingredients don't get confused about that just do the meditation and when i send out the link for this recording i also include a class of geshe michael roach which is about two hours, but where he explains all the steps in great, great detail. So if you want to know more about each step, then maybe I would like you to watch that class. Otherwise, please get ready for the preliminaries. And be warned, I will on a regular basis, just break the meditation with the word check, which means Oh, is the watcher active? Where? What is my mind doing in the moment? Awesome.
So we have chosen the picture of baking a cake because if you take care of meditation preliminaries, your cake, the meditation will be very, very beautiful. We are taking before we start the main meditation in a normal setting. Today it is our main meditation. You take care of your karma. So please sit upright. Do your body check, how we learned it in our last class. Legs. Hands. Spine upright and straight. Eyelids relaxed. The tip of your tongue touching the back of your front teeth or gums. Chin parallel to the ground. Shoulders level. And then put your concentration on the tip of your nose and watch 10 breaths. Start counting with the exhale. Check. Check.
Now we start the meditation. Invite a teacher to meditate with you. Maybe somebody who taught you, your parents, a school teacher. Or maybe a historical person, Jesus, Nelson Mandela. Somebody you admire. The person comes into the room and sits down in meditation posture next to you. Your knees are not quite touching. Feel the person sitting with you in meditation. Maybe you can him or her hear breathing. Or smell their body fragrance. And then next you make some kind of mental prostration by admiring one of their good qualities. Pick one. The next step is making a gift. Send them a gift in your mind. Maybe something you know they like.
or you can also send them a beautiful sunset or the sky full of flowers. Or you can send them your practice. I really work hard on my meditation. I made it three times this week. I present it as a gift to you. The next step is open your heart and confess a bad karma you planted. Be, be very open, don't hide anything. Check. The next step is rejoicing. Be happy about something good you have done. Tell your teacher the good things you have done. And then rejoice also for other people you have seen doing good things. Check.
In the next step, ask the teacher to teach you. In whatever way it might be necessary. And then put forth another request that the teacher stays with you, does not break your relationship. And ask him as well not to die. Then thank your teacher that he has meditated with you, he or she. And either the teacher now leaves or you can take the teacher into your heart. And if you choose that option, the teacher happily agrees smiles at you. And then the teacher rises up into the air and gets smaller and smaller. And on the level of your head, he turns around looks in the same direction as you and is landing on your head. He has now the side of a thumbnail and he travels down along your spine towards your heart. Here he stays for the rest of your day. And you can always ask him if you have a question. And then come back to your breath. Three long exhales. Send the good karma of this meditation out. And when ready, open your eyes, stretch.
Thank you for that. And that brings us to the end of today's class, which, and we only have two more classes left. Um, so next week we will talk more about these remedies in depth. So practice this week and uh, as part of your homework, begin to experiment with the remedies that uh, you learn about today. So increase your meditation to 15 minutes. Remember, no more. Practice the preliminaries. If you need to go back to the recording, you can do so. We will post that in the next day or so. Keep on um, keeping your meditation journal, but really practice some of these remedies and uh, we will offer some more in-depth remedies next week. If you have questions to the remedies, mm. please send them before because then we can adjust the class as well, especially to your questions and go these topics, have them more in depth. That would be great. Good. One, wonderful. So thank you very much. I'm going to sign off here from Diamond Mountain. Um, as always, these classes are free, but if you feel that you would like to donate, donate to Diamond Mountain, you can do so by following the links here. Thank you so much. See you next Saturday. Bye. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye.